wasn't supposed to end this way. I never meant for it to end this way. If only he had listened to me. If only he had followed my advice. Poor sweet Jesus. Poor naive Jesus who would not listen. Poor foolish Jesus, now he hangs from that ugly Roman cross. Do you think that I, I, of all the people in the world, would want to see any Jew hanging from a Roman cross? Least of all Jesus? He just didn't understand the world. He didn't understand how you change the world. If he had followed my advice, he could be sitting on a throne right now rather than hanging from that cross. If only he had listened to me. I don't understand. Do you know what it's like to be a slave in your own country? Do you know what it's like to have the boot of the oppressor on your throat? Do you know what it is to have your own priests and leaders betray you? I'm tired. So very tired. I need to rest, to think. It's too late for that now. In the beginning, everything seemed so right. I believed he represented everything I had wanted for all my life. He was the one. The one who would set Israel free. The one who would restore to us our dignity. He was the one who would lead us to drive the Roman oppressors from our soil. When I first saw him in Nazareth at the synagogue, he spoke the words of the prophet. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me, Jesus said, to proclaim release for the captives the restoring of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That's all I ever wanted. To set free the downtrodden, to release the captives, to proclaim good news to Israel. I just wanted people to see, to see the possibility of freedom, to see our bondage. Jesus said then that he would fulfill that scripture. There was no reason to disbelieve him. It seemed possible. If only he had understood how the world works. I believed he was the one that we had waited for. He was the one around whom the people would gather. Everyone liked him. In all the little villages and everywhere we went, even the Samaritans and the foreigners would have been willing to help us. We could have thrown the Romans out. Every night, I would whisper in his ear, When? Jesus, when? Jesus? And he would smile and say, The kingdom of God is at hand. Yet everywhere we went, there were still Romans. Roman rule, and Roman guards, and Roman this, and Roman that. It was grotesque to imagine the kingdom of God and Roman rule existing together. Oh, we had always had preachers in Israel. There was not a day of my life when you couldn't find a preacher standing on every corner of Jerusalem and every step of the temple. There was always someone interpreting the law. And throughout the countryside, you could always find someone proclaiming he was the Messiah, proclaiming he would set the people free. But Jesus... Jesus was different. He did things no other man has ever done. I confess, I don't know how he did it. There was a time when I thought the hand of God was upon him because he, he performed miracles impossible for any ordinary man. He produced the signs of Messiah. But if that had been true, if he had been the Messiah, he wouldn't be hanging from that cross now, would he? God would never let that happen. Oh, Jesus. I saw things. I saw him restore sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, speech to the silent. I saw Jesus touch lepers and make them whole again. I saw him restore strength to broken arms and legs. 
I saw him do things no other man had ever done. I don't know how he did it, but I saw him raise the dead. Oh, Jesus just didn't understand. I mean, you understand what it takes to change the world? It takes power and arms and troops and strength. Jesus didn't understand that. And when I tried to tell him, he wouldn't listen. Oh, Jesus, 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 why wouldn't you listen to me? The words that once had thrilled me were followed soon by words that frightened me, that struck to the very center of my being. He said words strange to the lips of any man in Israel, but certainly to one who would be Messiah. He told the crowds, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. And if someone should slap you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. Who does that? What man in his right mind does not resist evil? What man would allow someone to strike him on one cheek and turn to him the other? And if that weren't enough, he said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Who among you does that? Who among you prays for your enemies? Who among you loves your enemies? Who among you turns the other cheek? Jesus, 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 if only you had listened to me. There were so many things he did that I didn't understand. Far too much time wasted on children. Far too much time wasted healing and restoring broken minds and broken bodies. When the whole nation was broken, it was much more important to be about the business of repairing and healing nations rather than wasting time on individuals. But I never could get Jesus to see that. He always had time for others. Once, when the children wanted to come to him and we were trying to protect him, he never rested long or took care of himself enough, so we were sending the children away. He rebuked us. Let the children come to me, he said. It was always, let them come, let everyone come. And when he wasn't wasting time with children, it was women. A man like that should never speak to a woman in public, let alone invite them to sit with men and be taught the things of God. He even allowed them to follow us. He not only spoke to them, he actually touched them. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He just didn't understand. And so many wasted opportunities. One day, after he had been preaching all day and there had been some healings, the crowd was restless. The children were bawling. The parents were beginning to argue among themselves. It was getting late. We said to him, They are tired, they are hungry, and we are tired and hungry. Send them home. And Jesus said to us, Feed them. Feed them? I was the keeper of the purse. I knew we hardly had enough coin to feed ourselves, let alone this crowd. Later, we found out there were more than 5,000 men, plus all the women and children. Andrew brought along a little boy with a few loaves and some fishes. Jesus blessed the loaves and fishes. And we fed everyone there until their bellies were full. Now, I thought, people will follow someone who can feed them if he would just say the word. This multitude, these men, they would follow him to Jerusalem. We could throw the Romans out. Jesus, I said, say the word and they will become an army. Jesus shook his head and whispered, Judas, you just don't understand. It was he that didn't understand. He just couldn't face reality. If only he had listened to me. And why wouldn't he listen to me? I was the smartest one of the bunch. I was the shrewdest one. I was the most aggressive one. And yet he was always rebuking me. I loved him in my own way. And I wasn't 
always doing stupid things like Peter, or bickering like Andrew and John, or groveling like some. And Levi, ha! A tax collector, betrayer! Jesus let him into the group and treated him just like everyone else. Opportune moment after opportune moment passed without action. Jesus sounded more like a religious fanatic every day. He had to be reminded that our faith was one of national pride and power. David's throne must be reestablished. Then the nations would see Israel's God. I had to do something. Somehow I had to get his attention. Jesus just didn't understand the situation. I had to make him see and act. There were still so many missed opportunities. One time, when we were on our journey to Jerusalem, where I hoped he would throw out the Romans, he told us to get him a donkey. We brought back this small animal. He climbed up on its back. He looked so silly, his feet nearly touched the ground. If I had known why he wanted the beast, if only he had told us what he wanted, I could have gone into Jerusalem and stolen for him a fine Roman horse with a great chariot. He could have ridden into Jerusalem like an emperor, like a king, like a messiah should. But not Jesus. Jesus chose a donkey, the beast of burden. Nonetheless, it was amazing what happened. As the beast approached Jerusalem, the multitudes began to gather around him, shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming! Hosanna in the highest! The kingdom of our father David? They knew. They understood. He was the only one there that didn't seem to understand the Messiah's role. Another wasted opportunity. I knew then I had to make him do what he would not do. I had to force him to see what he would not see. I would make him a Messiah. I would make him a messiah like David. I could force him to do what he would not do. I began to plot. The next day, we were still in Bethany, and we went to the home of Simon. There a woman burst into the room. He was always wasting so much time with women. Once, he had sat down with a Samaritan woman and even drunk from her jar. It was bad enough to converse with the Samaritans, but a Samaritan woman? And he spoke to her in public! Women were always hanging around and following us. It's not that I object to women in their place, you understand. But on this occasion, it was a woman of the streets. No man should speak to a woman of the streets, least of all a teacher of Israel. She had brought with her an alabaster vase full of costly perfume. She broke the vase and poured it over him. She is wasting that, I cried out. Don't you see, Jesus? We could sell that perfume and use the money to feed the poor. He didn't rebuke her. He rebuked me. He said, let her alone, she has done a good deed. I realized again that he would never do the appropriate thing. He would never be the leader he should be. I determined then that I must carry through with my plot. I would make him see. I went to the chief priests in order to betray him. I felt dirty being in the same room with those traitors to Israel, those collaborators with the Romans. But I had to do it. I had to do it. I agreed to betray Jesus. Yes, yes, they gave me money. 
But it wasn't the money. I didn't do it for the money. I took the money back and flung it in their faces. I had to make it appear that I wanted to help them and betray him. That night, we were in an upper room. It was a strange evening. Oh, we had been together often. But this particular evening, there was a shadow over us all. Hardly anyone spoke above a whisper. After a few minutes, Jesus took a basin of water and began washing our feet. Who would follow a man who treats women as well as men and washes the feet of his followers? Who would follow a man who chose to ride into the holy city of David on the back of a donkey? Then he spoke of betrayal. I thought, he knows, someone has told him, perhaps one of the priests. But all the other men began shouting, Surely it is not I, Lord. And he looked me in the eye and pierced my soul. Go, he said. What you are going to do, do quickly. I knew where he would be, so I told the priests where they could find him. I didn't want to go with the soldiers to arrest him, but they insisted. It was part of the deal, they said. I had to point him out. I had told them earlier that it would be the one that I would kiss. As we approached the garden, I saw Peter, James, and John doing what they did best, sleeping. They jumped to their feet, and foolish Peter withdrew his sword and cut off the ear of one of the guards. And Jesus, as I should have expected, rebuked Peter and healed his enemy. Who heals his enemy? They came to arrest him, and he didn't resist, but instead healed one wounded in the taking? I approached him. My hands were trembling. Once again, his eyes looked into my soul. It was hard for me, but I had to do it. I had to do it. I betrayed a friend with a kiss. And as my lips touched his cheek, I could taste the salt of his tears and his perspiration. I didn't want to do it. I had to do it. You understand? Don't blame me unless you would have done it differently. I ask you, where were the others during this trial? Where were the others when they dragged him through the streets, humiliated him, whipped him and scorned him? Where were the others when they hung him on a cross between two thieves? Where were those whose sight he had restored? Those whose hearing he had restored? Those that he had healed? Where were the parents and friends of those he healed and those he raised from the dead? Where were the thousands he fed that day? Where were you? Where were you when they hung him on that cross? Would you have cried out? Would you have defended him? You see, I thought the others would rally around him. I thought in that moment of physical danger, he would forget all his words of peace and call forth his friends to fight. But not Jesus. Poor, dumb Jesus. If only he had listened to me. It's his own fault! Don't judge me. Don't you judge me unless you would follow a leader like Jesus. I ask you, do you pray for your enemies? Do you bless those who persecute you? I ask you, do you turn the other cheek? Don't judge me 
unless you could live by his words and live like he lived. Oh God, I betrayed a friend with a kiss. God, what have I done? Oh God, let me die. Let me die.